Welcome to another adventure. <laughs> uh, Christine and I are out again. Once again, we're actually uh, at the uh, north of uh, Frontenac Parklands. And uh, we're on Big Gull Lake this time. Thought we'd give this one a try. A little different. Cottages at both access points, but in the middle of the lake. Lots and lots of crown land. Again, though, you have to uh, pay. I think it's $22 a, a night, which is pretty good. And it's maintained by the municipality. And yeah, kind of cool. So we are put in on the eastern access and we're heading to our campsite. Do you know where we're going? No, I, I, the, the map's just a photocopy blur. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't sound too confident there. Well, I'm not. <laughs> I, I know we got to go this way. We're going this way. Yeah, it's a very long lake. Okay. Yeah. So just keep looking to the right. Yes, yes. And it's not hot, is it? No, it's beautiful. Well, it's overcast, but... That's fine. Thank God. This is like perfect canoeing weather. Yeah. Yeah, it was a massive heat wave here for uh, three or four days. And in fact, we even bailed yesterday. We were supposed to head out yesterday, but there was a massive thunderstorm, lightning, uh, 40 degree temperatures Celsius. And we're like, yeah, no thanks. But now after the storm hit, it's cooled down. It's quite nice. Awesome. Angel, what do you think? Oh, Kevin. This is great. You didn't bring that other dog, did you? You did, didn't you? Oliver's here. Oh. Hey, Ollie. <laughs> this is a full boat. <laughs> I've been paddling this 70-foot uh, uh, prospector um, mostly all summer because Christine and I are going out with the dogs and we're bringing lots of gear. And we tend to bring lots of gear. This is a portage-free trip. So uh, we tend to bring more gear, more beer, more gear uh, when that happens. Thor's hammer. You know, Thor's hammer, like, if you can't lift it, you can only lift it if you're Thor. Okay, give it a try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone Seriously. made that. I know. Not quite sure why. Put the tent pegs in? Tent pegs? Or maybe it was Thor. Maybe, maybe Thor was here. Yeah. Oh. Maybe he'll be back. <laughs> we'll just leave that where he left it. He'll be back later for that, I'm sure. 
Uh, you're getting into the chocolate already? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have to make up for lost time. <laughs> I know. We're, we're a day late. I know we are. Did you want one? Oh, no, it's all right, dear. I knew you wanted one. <laughs> nice sight? Yeah, very nice. Quiet, peaceful, nobody around. Yeah. Beautiful. I have a trick uh, in this area is don't come here on the weekend. Well, I wouldn't say don't come here on the weekend. Just know that there's going to be lots of people around on the weekend. That's all. Yeah. If you want it quiet, if you don't want anybody around you, then don't try to come here on the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. So how long did it take us to get to the site? An hour and a half. And that's from the... Canoeing. The yeah. canoeing part? Yeah. An hour and a half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you live near Kingston and it took us what? To drive here? An hour? Oh, I think a bit more than that. Maybe an, I don't know, an hour and 15 minutes maybe? Yeah. So that's pretty good. Yeah? Because like where we are is pretty, I wouldn't say remote, but... Well, it feels like we're far away from anything. I mean, you can hear the boats. We can still hear boats, even though there's nobody camping around us. There's people fishing. Um, and there's cottages, like where the put-in is, for a bit, on this lake. But yeah, out here there's like nobody. No, no. And the one trip we're going to do, Actually, this week we're going to go up to Lake Tomogamy and yeah. paddle around Lake Tomogamy, which is, would be really cool, but we yeah, couldn't afford if, the gas. <laughs> no, if you want to drive six and a half hours just to get there. Yeah. And that's fine. I would love to do that, but just not right now. Not when you only have a few days, too. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to drive somewhere for six and a half hours to spend, you know, three or four days. Yeah, because we I we're, think. Yeah. Not when we could drive an hour and be here like it's beautiful yeah because we're doing the stay home thing or staycation staycation yeah to save us money yeah i got no money for gas not the way gas prices are this summer holy moly <laughs> all right so i said it before but we're on big gall lake it's part of the north course of highlands parkland mm -hmm. you do have to pay it's crown land but you do have to pay to, to, to be here you have to reserve a site so you can do it easily online. It's, it's really easy to do online. Uh, and you can phone if you don't have a computer. So, um, yeah, I just thought Big Gull Lake... I paddled across this lake before when I did the Crush Lake, um, Big Gull Lake, whatever, loop, whatever. But uh, I just thought, yeah, it was, it's a Kaji Lake, so why do it? But there's cottages on one end, cottages on the other. But in between, all the islands are all crown land and campsites are here for you. Really clean, too. Really clean campsites. Yeah, Very really clean. impressed with whoever manages... Mm -hmm. This area, really impressed with you. Yeah, fantastic. And no there's problem. a nice um, thunder box here. Yes, it's painted red so you can see it. You know exactly where it is. It stands out. Yeah. It's, a, it's funny what, how we're different in, in, in our camp, camping initiatives. We, as soon as we get to the site, I look at where I can go fishing. And Christine goes to check the outhouse out. <laughs> I check to see where a perfect tarp can be set up. And Christine goes to check the, the outhouse out. Well, I just want to make sure it's actually standing or whatever, if it's supposed to be here. Yeah, yeah. I go to I check. I want to know where it is. I go to check to see if there's some good, dry, standing wood. Christine checks the outhouse. <laughs> I, uh, I go to check to see where a nice tent is, a nice safe place with no standing trees for blowdowns. Because there was a major storm that hit here a couple weeks ago, and I would not want to be here at that time. And, but Christine goes to check the outhouse. I also check the fire pit. Like, what, what is that? That's a big, huge, stingy thing. It's like one of those murder hornets, I think. It looks like a murder hornet. <laughs> I think it's going near the outhouse. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's a huge... Oh, oh. That was massive. I don't know what mm. that is. And the dogs are very excited that they're here. <laughs> you know why they're excited? I, I, I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. It's 4.03. Oh. It's because they, they have their dinner at 4.30 and Angels is starting to pace right now. Um, can we do a time check? Sure can. All right. All right. Wait, 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 wait. No, 4.03. No, no, I no, I know. I'm going to say 3.43. 3.43? 3.43. Okay. Oh my God. 
What? Oh my god! <laughs> I'm good! Help somebody, you're freaking me out, man. And you know why I'm good at that? I never take a watch in the bush. So I can estimate time without a watch. True story. Bush skills, 101. <laughs> right. Okay, I gotta go to the outhouse. Christine, what's it like? It's red. We can't miss it. Okay. I'm so glad you checked it out first. Mm -hmm. Hello! <laughs> kind of confined quarters here. But, yeah. It's one of those things, I, I despise these tales at times, uh, at campsites, but love them when you're using them. <laughs> Alright, got some oil going. No portages, so I brought that jumbo stove again. Kind of loving this. Got it on, on uh, you know, used because it's expensive. But yeah, well, anyway, um, having ham, like a, brought a full quarter ham, we're gonna slice that up and fry it. And <laughs> get some baked beans with the can opener. And also, and some potatoes. So yeah, uh, this was supposed to be our second night. Like I said before, it was way too hot yesterday and stormy and lightning, thunder, whatever to go out. So uh, instead of three nights, we're doing two. So we're doing night two dinner tonight. And uh, I had the ham in the barrel in my cooler bag, once again, uh, from Recreational Barrel Works, my buddy Andy. Thanks Andy, because the beer was cold <laughs> and the ham basically was frozen. I had to take it out to you thought so anyway cooking this up lots of bird life around here yes it's a Kaji lake you would not know it right now two boats went past us this is uh this is Tuesday and Tuesday yeah and um, oh you can see Christine right there look look there she is right there she's reading her book while I'm doing dinner isn't that interesting right okay cheers everybody it's just really good to be out again. And I'm so glad the heat wave is gone because I don't go out unless I'm, I'm out and it happens. But I don't go out during heat waves. I don't do well in heat. So it's nice and cool now. No deer flies. Thank goodness. We're going to have a good dinner. Awesome! Kevin, this looks really good. I know, look, the beans, this is your idea. What, my idea, I know it wasn't. So I, I, I didn't have another pot to cook the beans up. So I'm doing that in with the leftovers Woo. of the uh, of the ham. Oh, like in with oh, the ham. Oh, look at that, look. <gasps> oh. in, in with the ham drippings, right? Yeah, the yeah. drippings. Well, there's the ham, okay, which looks ham. like amazing. And then I'm just boiling water for the potatoes. Oh. Mmm, that looks like really yummy. I meant to do that. Better than no, straight out of the pot. That's I mean, true. I mean the can. You know, there's been times in my life where I've actually just put a can of beans on top of a candle. You could do that. Just to say, are we going to live through the night? <laughs> did you live through the night? We did. We caught a huge pike, northern pike off the campsite. And, uh, um... We filled the pike. We didn't have. I had tin foil. I had tin foil, so I brought the pike fillets in the tin foil, cooked that, um, and uh, made made the beans up. It was a massive storm. It's a long story. It's in Killarney. Mm. Three arrows. Mm. I, I I was in high school. We mm. didn't know what we were doing. And what's really funny is we went into Three Narrows, um, and Ralph and I, that well, all of us were supposed to go into the Three Narrows, and then these guys we were with they. They saw some girls on the beach in Killarney Provincial Park and they're like, hey, we're not going interior. We're not going backcountry. On your own. See you guys later. We're going to get lucky. 
So we went in and uh, actually terrible portage uh, into Three Narrows, three kilometers long. We get there. Well, because they were supposed to go with us, there was some gear that was missing. Um, what do we have? We had oil, we had a frying pan, we had prunes, we had sugar, we had beans. So we actually cooked the beans over a candle the first night because it was downpouring rain and we actually ate in inside the tent. Do not do that. But we ate inside the mm. tent. And then the next night we're like, well, what are we going to do? We should go home. No, no, because we're in grade 12, right? No, no. And so we caught, we caught a pike, we wrapped up in tin foil, cooked it on the campfire, and then we had that, and then we headed back to the campsite. Sweet love of life is beautiful. We're going there, and we had a huge adventure. Uh, a little hungry, but we had a great adventure. And there's the guys sitting on the beach, all lonesome, because those girls had met some really hunky guys. <laughs> Unlike us because <laughs> we are like nerds in high school and uh we ralph and i had a great adventure and those guys had nothing hmm. well, I, that's all I, got. What? I think a pretty a, a guy who can eat beans out of a can warmed up over a candle is pretty hunky yes that's what i thought too yeah yeah that's... and and cook a a, a, a a pike um oh the other thing that happened on that trip too we hung our food because you suppose. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, uh -oh. Oh, oh. I think the beans are done. No, no. No, they're done. Really? Yeah. No. No, they're done. You just need to warm them. Two more minutes. Two more minutes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Or at the end of the story. Okay. Two How more. about at the end of the right. story? Old, old, old. My gosh. Oh, all right. Well, okay. I gotta go. Fast story. Okay. Fast story is we hung the food over a, a branch, um, but it was a branch hanging over the lake. And we heard splash, and we thought, oh my goodness, a bear has tried to get the food and fell into the lake. No, just our food fell in the lake. Right. Yeah. The branch broke? Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't eat the prunes and the sugar. Okay. Right. I, th I think the beans are done. Okay. Whew. Good Good stories, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Good cooking. Great. And I'm no longer the, like, the, the nerdy guy that did that in high school. I'm the very, like, that's why Christine is with me out here in the wilderness. Yeah, it's not true at all. <laughs> this, is, this is why I'm with you out here in the wilderness. <laughs> you got the fire going yet? No. Nope. I've gathered firewood. I know you have. Yeah. I'll start the fire when we're done eating. Okay. Okay. Right. Guess who's doing dishes? <laughs> well. Mm. Yeah? Uh, wait, I haven't tried the beans yet. I'm like, got the wrong hand here. Meat my ham and beans with a spoon. It's very hot. Yeah, that's good. Good way to make bean beans? Mm hmm. Yeah, very rich. Yeah. The outhouse is just around the corner, Christine. <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. Come on. <laughs> no. Okay, there was a storm here last night. Uh, <laughs> Christine thought she brought her fire starter. I thought I brought mine. I have this rope. Okay. Uh, oops, you want to hold that? Yeah. Yeah, true. Okay, so that's fire starter. So I bought this um, SOL. It's a paracord, very small paracord, but inside of it is fire starter. Seriously. Here's okay. an A. Cut it, burn it, let's see what happens. Okay, that's a dull knife. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's see if that burns. Like literally just burn the rope? Yeah, just get, get to that one freight end. Okay. Like here, here. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. already started. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's burning. And it's like staying burnt, staying lit. There you go. I've had that in my pack all season. Is and yet to 
Yeah, it's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. Now, I'm questioning, should I have pulled it all the way out of that rope further? No, I don't cause... know. I've never tried this. I just okay. bought it because I thought this is really cool. So I'm trying to get the, like, wet twigs to light, but... No, that's fire starter. Look at that. Oh, my. Yeah, that's really cool. That's working better than the birch bark I just yeah. tried. So that's SOL, Survive Outdoors Longer. Just thought it was a cool gimmick, to be quite honest, but it's working. It's going to burn all the way up that thing, I think. Yeah. Okay. Wow, well, okay. There's paracord with fire starter embedded in it <laughs> we got a lot of fire starter kevin <laughs> i know it's a bit of a mess too <laughs> who put this in my pack that's a professional like myself would never just throw that in his pack like that like really Shh. concentrating <laughs> that's cool that is like it, it's still burning and it's only burning that end bit yeah like the whole like that. Yeah, that's all right. Fire. I caught a fish. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Come on, man, it's so cute. Come on. Let that one go. Okay. Okay, let him go. Oh, yeah. It's normal fast. You might take him off? Or? Yeah. <laughs> Why can't you take him off? No. I don't know how. We'll get back to you. <laughs> I have to take Christine's fish off. Sometimes we act like a fool Not aware we're troublemakers Sometimes we try to be cool Not being givers, only takers
minute. What's for lunch? Um, we have our good old standby meat, cheese, and cucumbers mm. and mustard. Ooh. Mm hmm. Tough stuff out here. Mm. Very. Hey, Callan. You've been really cheap on treats this trip. Look, I don't need a diet. I'm fine with my body. Come on, treat me. Treat me good. I know I'm good at figuring out what time it is out here. Um, I've always have been. It's like probably the only talent I really have to be quite honest, but I, I can't beat this. I, I, we're sitting there and I'm thinking, uh, well, it's probably like, I don't know, like 4.11. I'm an alien from another planet. That's what it is. <laughs> I've always had that I, I, since I was a kid, actually. Um, I don't know. It's 4:12. It's right not now. like I know what it is yeah. before. Like I'm not going like, oh, are you sure it's that late, Kevin? And making you change your mind. Like I'm not even looking at the phone before you do that. <laughs> it's all a facade. <laughs> now I'm going to pull a rabbit out of my hat. I should go and work at the um, the fairs instead of guessing yes. people's ages and weights. I'll I'll guess the time. Yeah, I, but how does that? Yeah, you know what? I'll never make a living doing that. But, no. You know, who would pay for that? Exactly. That's what I'm yeah. thinking. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks for the enthusiasm. Love you a few bits. I have a very slow leak in my favorite air mat, <laughs> so I'm gonna go see if I can find out where the hole is. I think I found it. Uh, it's very, very small. I have a patch kit. I'll show. I got this patch kit. I always have in my repair kit. Uh, duct tape works just as well, or Gorilla tape or whatever. But yeah, it's really small. I think it was one of the paw prints of the doggies. I think so. Well, night two which is supposed to be night three. So what we're having for dinner, uh, we have dehydrated uh, red pepper, mushroom, and zucchini. Yeah, uh, that Christine did at home. I'm gonna reconstitute that. Uh, we're gonna do some pasta. Okay, this is pasta, no big deal. And yeah, we're doing this. Nor mix. Life is good out here. I love it. I love it. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I haven't done this for a while. Wait. Tasty? Mm, it is tasty. Simple and tasty. Yeah. Yep. One of my favorites, actually. Christine hates when I film her eating. <laughs> Just make a note of that. Okay, so it's our last night on Gull Lake, Big Gull Lake, uh, the Northern Frontenac Parkland. Yes, yes. No, North Frontenac Parkland. Yes. <laughs> uh, Southeastern Ontario. So yeah, um, I've been to this lake years ago. Um, I used to guide actually around here, but 
Yeah, I haven't been for a while, and a couple weeks ago, Christine and I went to Gold, no, Cross Lake, um, and then decided to go to uh, Big Gold Lake to give it a try too. And yeah, why? Well, two main reasons. One is she lives just near Kingston. I keep <laughs> not pronouncing it. Amersville? Am Amersville? Amers. Am Am Amer Hill? Okay, some small town. Just Am Amherstview. Amherstville. <laughs> no? Amherstview. Amherstview. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so she lives there. <laughs> So it just it's just um, just over an hour to get to uh, all these uh, northern uh, Frontenac Parkland sites. When I originally went here years ago, it was all Crownland, which it still is Crownland, but uh, you didn't have to pay. But so many people started showing up that they had to create some type of organization, which I think is needed. And um, yeah, so for twenty-two dollars uh, a night, we went on the, their website and booked this site. The site was number 17. And um, yeah, it's different than Crotch Lake. Crotch Lake, I think, is the gem because uh, there's not a lot of development. Whereas here, lots of cottages at first were like, oh gosh, what are we getting ourselves into? Central part of the lake, nothing really except Crownland Islands with a bunch of campsites. And yeah, boat traffic, which I'm fine with. If you're not fine with boat traffic, you're not fine with um, all that busyness. Yeah, maybe go somewhere else, but um, I don't know. I'm fine with it. So we uh, we stayed here. Uh, we we're supposed to stay here for three nights, but a big storm came in the first night, so we we bailed and only spent two nights. And I think we're going to be back real soon, whether it's this lake or all the other lakes around here. There's so many other lakes. There are three big lakes here. There's Crash Lake, which has no development except a lodge. And um, again, I think that's the, the gem. Then there's Big Gall Lake, which actually has cottages on both ends, boat traffic, and, but yeah, Serenity, because right now it's just beautiful. And then there's, oh, Kashawaga. Christine, help me with this. Kashwana, Kashwana, Mac, Kashwana, We have learned a few things. I would not go here on a, on a weekend if you have to because that's what you have like you have a job and that, that makes sense that you have to work during the week and go for the weekend don't go here in a long weekend <laughs> well you won't even get a site uh, it's so booked up so just watch out for that like it's not peace and serenity right it's craziness uh, but throughout the week it's fine um, off season, I think would be fantastic. Also, choose your campsite mm, strategically because we have we're on campsite 17, which is a really nice site. There's another site just over the hump uh, from us. Nobody's been on it for the last couple of days, and that's because this is not a really good site. It's a really small site, and but it's not the weekend too. But we're in the Narrows, and it seems that this is the walleye fishing place to go in the morning and the night and they're all gathering out of fish in the morning they're all gathering the fish which I'm fine with but if you're not fine with that if you're not fine with sitting around the fire at night and having a bunch of people fishing around you or in the morning having your coffee um, and having everybody fishing around you and chit chatting then don't go here there we go boats leaving while I are not biting tonight so um, it's fantastic to be quite honest for me um, 22 bucks a night. It's well maintained. The, the ranger came to visit us today while we're out fishing and um, made sure that we were supposed to be on the site, which I have no problem with. Yes, we are. Here's the permit. Uh, I, I did ask him, do, do some people have some problems? Yes, they do. I guess they, they just camp here without a permit and then get angry and defensive. Um, very few, he said, very few. So, uh, yeah, that's going on. I don't know. It's, it's a huge place to go with lots of people not far from Toronto and Ottawa. So what do you expect? You can't have it back in the old days where you just went on Crown Land and found a spot and too bad for you if you don't get it. It can't happen right now here. Uh, wish it did, 
but it can happen. So uh, I'll, I'll turn it over to Christine to see what she has to say. Yeah, there's some cottages around. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. I can't see any here. Like, we don't see them. And you know what? You didn't have to portage. No portaging. Honestly, when you only have, like, a few days, to me, you don't spend, like, six hours of one of those days just getting somewhere when you've got all this, like, in your backyard. Okay. Does that sound good? You just don't want to portage ever. If I don't have to portage ever, I'm good with that. How do we ever start, Danny? I don't know. I forgot to check that box, the, the box that says, like, I hate portaging. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you are, to be quite honest, at the end of the day. We got a nice fire going. Like, we have a really nice site and a beautiful view. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, how can, like, seriously, like, how can you... What's not to love about that? Right. Sun's gonna set right there. Arms out and hold you like before 